Are you ready for the Word of God? Are you ready to be challenged? To reset your faith? To align yourself with God's purposes? Please stand to your feet as we do the declaration. Are you ready? One, two, three. I'm a son of God revealed. I'm blessed with every blessing in Christ Jesus. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm a life-giving spirit. I accept his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection power in my life. I'm bound to his word and can do what it says I can do. I receive the word with meekness and I'm changed from glory to glory. I have the God kind of faith. I'm the righteousness of God and will never be the same. Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. As you take your seat, turn to the person next to you and say, your smile looks better than the last time I saw you. Keep on smiling. I know you have a lot of things to be happy about. Amen. Well, this morning I want to share with you on the purpose of life. The purpose of life. Turn to the person next to you and say, your life has a purpose. I want to start by saying that The purpose of your life is to bring glory to God. Everything that we do should bring glory to God. You have a purpose. God has called you for a purpose. When you were in your mother's womb, He had called you already. The truth is you'll know your purpose best by knowing the creator of life the one who gave you purpose when you know Jesus God familiar with the Holy Spirit in your life it's easier to understand your purpose you know sometimes people think God is just love but God is not just love he's also holy He's also righteous, omnipotent. He's full of grace. He's full of mercy. But he's also righteous. Amen. Jesus came to this earth to restore glory back to man. From the beginning, God created you to manifest His glory. When we look at Romans 3, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What does that mean? From the beginning, God designed you for glory. His purpose was glory. Adam and Eve in the garden, they had to keep the garden there to be obedient to God's word. And when they were not obedient and they sinned, they were disconnected from the glory of God. Jesus came to this earth. The Bible says when He manifested, we could see His glory. Full of grace, full of truth. Amen? Turn to the person next you say, you have a purpose. Tell them again, say you have a purpose. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John chapter 17. Jesus came to restore glory back to us. Jesus came to help us so that we can fulfill our purpose. You have a purpose. You are here for a reason. You're not an accident. Amen? Listen here. Jesus praying for his disciples. John 17 verse 6. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. I like this. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. I've manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. The Amplified said they've obeyed your word. When Adam was in the garden, he had to keep the garden. He had to keep God's word. When he didn't keep God's word, he sinned. And he was disconnected from the glory of God. It's all about keeping God's word. Jesus came and he said, These that you have given me, Father, they're in the world, but they're keeping your word. Why is this important? 
When you keep God's word, God will keep you. You keep God's word, God will keep you. It's a simple principle. From the beginning, see time and harvest. Galatians 6 verse 17, God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, he will reap. But whatever God asks of you, he will empower you to do it. Amen. Turn to the person next to you say, you're going to fulfill your purpose. Tell them again, say, you're going to fulfill your purpose. The Bible teaches us that many are called, but few are chosen. And when you stay close to God's word, I want to assure you that you will fulfill your purpose. I want to read from verse 11. Jesus speaking here. Now, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them. In your name, those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have joy fulfilled in themselves. That they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me in the world, I've also sent them into the world. Family, if you want to fulfill your purpose, you're going to have to allow the word of God to become an integral part of your life. And by its very nature, it will change you, help you, strengthen you, perfect everything concerning you so that you can fulfill your purpose. Jesus is praying. He says, Father, I'm not going to take them out of the world. They're in this world. But as they walk in this world, they've kept your word. This is the secret. Amen. Turn to the person next you say, obey God's word. This is the secret. Keeping God's word. If you want to fulfill your purpose, turn to the creator who gave you purpose. Amen. Jesus is praying this. Can I tell you, the real challenge for us is just to align ourselves with the word of God. To align yourself with the Word of God. That the Word of God would dominate your heart. Jesus said in John 8 verse 31, If you obey my Word, if you abide in my Word, you're my disciple. Today we have a generation, they, they don't even read the Bible. They don't pray, but they want to call themselves Christians. You have to. Spend time in the Word of God. This Word is life. It's light. It's given for instruction in righteousness so that you can fulfill your purpose. Amen? There's a scripture in the book of Mark 4 verse 24, the Amplified. It says the following, And he said to them, Be careful what you're hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. Studying this, this truth, the same measure you use to allow God's word to become the standard for your life will determine how much you align yourself with the Word of God, with your purpose, with your destiny. There's a plan that the devil has got for you, and there's a plan that God has got for you. The words you obey more will be the ones that will determine what path you will follow. If you're listening more to the world, you'll follow the world's dictates. 
But if you listen to the word, even though you're in the world, you fulfill God's purpose for your life. As a child of God, you would know in your heart what God has called you to do. Can you see the importance to allow God's word to be the standard in your life? To get God's opinion about your life? Turn to the person that you say you have a purpose. And that purpose is, is to glorify God. Can I tell you something? If you stay in the Word of God, you will never miss your purpose. When you stay in the Word of God, you will never miss your purpose. It's not our strength, but it's His strength. It's not our ability, but it's His ability. Whatever God has called you to do, the Word has got the answer to take you from glory to glory and from strength to strength. Amen. Turn to the person that you say, you have a purpose. That purpose is to glorify the name of Jesus. Sometimes in life we can feel like I'm missing my purpose or I'm not fulfilling my purpose. Have you ever felt yourself standing on that little area in your life where you think, I'm missing my purpose in life? Let me see your hand. Turn to the person that you say, I've got good news for you. There's a way to get back to your purpose. His name is Jesus Christ. The way that you find yourself back to your purpose is find yourself back into the presence of God. When you get into the presence of God, He'll give you that assurance. When you meet with Him face to face, that special place is a place where we receive help, where we receive instruction, where we receive guidance. Let me show you quickly. Go, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. Revelation 1. The new King James says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice. The, the Amplified says, I was wrapped up in God's power. Wow. It says, I was wrapped up in God's power. I'm looking towards the throne of God, meeting with Him face to face, and He heard a voice behind Him. Have you ever had an experience like that? You just want to focus upon Jesus, and then suddenly there's a voice here behind you? There's a voice behind you, and it's Jesus. It's okay. Amen? If it's a devil, don't turn around. This was God speaking to him. Go to verse 12, and it says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. Let's go to verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels. The Amplified says the, the messengers of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Can I tell you something? When God spoke to John, he was talking about churches. Can you see that the lamp stands refer to the churches? And Jesus was in the midst of the churches. This is why you have to be part of a living church. A church with Jesus in the midst of that congregation. Amen? I believe with all my heart that you cannot fulfill your full purpose, your destiny, what God has called you to do. If you're not part of a church, Jesus is coming back for his church. Not just to be part of the global church, the universal church, but a local expression. These letters are written to local expressions, different congregations. It says, I saw in the Spirit, I saw in the Spirit the churches. And Jesus was in the midst of the churches. Turn to the person next to you and say, you have to be part of a church. A living church is where the Holy Spirit is. Amen? He was in the Spirit. He was busy talking about the churches. Jesus is coming back for His church. 
without spot, without wrinkle. Can I tell you something about the book of Revelation? More than anything, it's a book of warning, admonishing, instruction in righteousness to the churches. Amen? In our journey, if you're going to travel from Pretoria to Cape Town or to Durban, wouldn't it be nice if somebody could call you and say, I just want to give you some warnings on your way down there. Watch out for this, watch out for this, watch out for this. Doesn't that make your journey easier? This is exactly what happened here. Revelation 2 verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Scripture says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. It's a warning to repent. Ask yourself, in fulfilling my purpose, how quick am I to forgive? Are you always right? Luke 17 says, offense will come to everybody. How many of the offenses that came to you in the past week, in the past month, has affected your heart and is still affecting your heart? He writes here and he says, he who overcomes. Can I tell you something? Even if you know your purpose, you're still going to have to overcome. James wrote, we count it all joy when we fall into various trials. Paul wrote in Romans 5, we glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. And the hope of God does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. How can we glory? We know the love of God is in our hearts and we know the end result. Amen? If you want to fulfill your purpose you're going to have to overcome many things. You're going to have to be an overcomer. Turn to the person next to you and say, you can overcome. Even when you know your purpose, you will have to overcome. You know, if I have to start to give my testimony from a young age when I knew my purpose, here's my mother sitting here today in the congregation. As a baby... I was dead twice. Where my mother lifted me up and she said, God, I give him to you. And breath came back. Promise him to you. Do you think just because a parent promises you to God that it will be easy? No. I faced many challenges. As a child, I used to get epileptic fits. Didn't know that about me. Wow, you look shocked. But turn to the person next to you and say, Jesus healed him when he was 13. My parents took me to a crusade and people prayed for me. And I got healed. Two years after that, the doctor took me off my medicine, my medication. Amen? Listen to me. When you've gone for prayer, go to your doctor and let him say, go off your medication. If you cannot trust God with your medication, how will you trust God without your medication? Amen? Would you like to hear more about the story? It gets, this, is, this is like just entry level. This is just out of the blocks. After that, I faced many other challenges. Amen? <laughs> But we overcame. I like our children's church. Overcomers. Overcomers. Amen. So I know if God could heal me, He can heal you. It's there where I saw people's legs growing out for the first time. People praying and I saw, say, oh God, that's one of the graces God has given us. We see many of those kind of miracles. Amen? Home Salid is praying for those kind of things, testifying of that. Teach your children to be overcomers. You know how they become overcomers? By the word. That's how they become overcomers. They are overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Psalm 119. 
How can a young man stay pure? How can a young man overcome? Only by living in the Word of God and walking in its truths. Parents, teach your children the Word of God. I know people are saying, young people today are more naughty, are doing crazy, funny stuff, but I want to tell you, I disagree. I think our young people today are better than what we were 20 and 30 and 40 years ago. Amen. They are facing more challenges, more difficulties, and they're making better decisions than what we made. Well, I'm saying amen. amen. Believe in your children. If you've taken the responsibility to teach them the Word of God, they will understand their purpose. Amen? Jesus wants you to overcome so that you can rule. He's not going to take us out of this world right now. Amen? Jesus came to this world to empower us by the Holy Spirit for successful living. Can I tell you something? Every time you overcome, God will reveal hidden secrets to you. Do you know that? Turn to the person next to you and say, it's important to overcome. Because every time you overcome, there's a reward. It's almost like a treasure hunt. Amen? The Word of God. Proverbs 25 says, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. Amen? The glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. So when you are facing a challenge, you can rejoice. That's why James said, count it all joy. Why? He says, well, there's a challenge coming. I know I'm going to overcome it by the grace of God. And after this, there's a reward. From glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. That's why we have to show our children a more excellent way. Jesus came to this earth to show a more excellent way. Our purpose is not to give up. There might be many challenges, many difficulties, but with Christ on the inside of you, you're an overcomer. Amen? Revelations 2. Let me just read it again. He who hears, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. The first church, when they overcame, says, you can eat of the tree of life. Life in life in abundance. Isn't that what Jesus came to do for us? Am I right? Go to verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. Wow. The manna was kept in the tabernacle. Hidden away. It says those things that are hidden away. When you overcome, I'm going to allow you to have revelation and understanding of that. Psalm 25 says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. Amen? There's some secrets. Everybody wants to know the secret to be successful. Allow God's Word to dominate your heart. Abide in His Word and you'll see what He will do for you. Amen. Taking you from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Revelations 2 verse 26. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Can you see every time God is moving us closer and closer? When you go to Revelations 4. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne. When you go on to Revelations 5, you'll see he's made us kings and priests so that we can rule and reign. Jesus came to this earth for his blood to speak for you, his righteousness to speak for you, his forgiveness to speak for you, so that you can rule 
I know many of you with all the challenges, you just want to get out of this world. But Jesus said, I'm keeping you in this world. In John 17, when you go, when he continues to pray, he says, Father, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. I'm in you, they in me. So that the world can believe. Do you know why God is clothing you with glory? So that you can win more people for Jesus, so that they can be clothed with the glory of God. You have a purpose. Turn to the person next to you, say, You have a purpose. Tell them again, say, You have a purpose. So many people don't step into what God has called them to do. You know, let me be honest. When I knew God had called me, my legs were shaking like this. When God called me to be a pastor, that purpose was scary because I was not a natural public speaker. The first time I spoke in a connect group, when somebody said, will you please come and share with our little group on a Wednesday? I prepared for two weeks, and I fasted for a week. <laughs> you are laughing because you know your gift and your abilities. You can probably just pick up your Bible and go and share with a connect group. But that's where I was at. It was overwhelming. When God showed me the small groups in a vision, when he showed me and he said larger groups and he showed me bigger things, Luckily, by the grace of God, I answered like Mary. I said, let it be according to your word. Your purpose will always be greater than you. Your purpose should let the fear of God rise up on the inside where you say, God, help me to fulfill my purpose. The first time, my wife will tell you, the first time when my pastor called me up and he said, I want you to prophesy, give words. I, I walked up, I walked up and I stood with my back towards the congregation with my legs shaking like this. And I said, God, just give me a word, please. God said, there's a lady with a yellow dress. She's got problems with her feet. Call her out that I can heal her. And I opened my eyes and I looked and I didn't see a yellow dress. And I'm thinking, who's speaking to me? <laughs> I said, I see a lady with a yellow dress. God wants to heal your feet. Can you please come to the front? And I'm looking and there right at the back, a lady gets up with a yellow dress and starts walking to the front. I'm saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We should rely upon God. Turn to the person next to you and say, stop procrastinating. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, that thing that you know that God has called you to do, what will happen if you just took the step and started doing it? Ask yourself the other question, what will happen if I never do it. There's some things in your own personal life that you can apply on different areas. What will happen if you never give attention to this thing that you know you should give attention to? But what will happen if you give attention to it and you start doing something? I'm not saying go take big steps. Sometimes it's, you know you should serve in a church, you should get, maybe it's just getting up and saying, just can you just write my name down for Children's Church? Can you just write my name down for, I want to help with the ushering? Maybe it's not just once a month. And just take that first little step. Some of you need to go do this in your business. Things that you want to sell. Things that you know that God wants you to make. And just start by that price list. And just write T-shirt. 150 rand. Just start to do something. God's word is a lamp unto our feet. 
It's when you take that step, then the light moves. Amen? You will never succeed in life on your own. Jesus, when he was praying, when he came down, he said to his disciples, watch and pray with me. Why? Because he knew nobody can succeed alone. You cannot make it on your own. Amen? Turn to the person next to you and say, it's not over yet. The Bible teaches us it's not the fastest person. It's not the strongest person. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strongest. But opportunity and chance comes to everybody. It's not too late for you to fulfill your purpose. You know, Elijah told Elisha, he said, just stick with me. When you see me going up, if you're there, if you don't procrastinate and you endure until the end, you'll receive it. You'll have it. Sometimes you cannot wait because faith acts now. Faith believes now. Faith receives now. So you're going to have to endure until the end. Jesus wants you to rule and reign. Amen? If you know God has called you to be an evangelist and lead people to the Lord, you don't have to wait for me to tell you to do that. Just go do it. Amen? The gifts that God has given you, the talents that God has given you, when you meet with Jesus face to face, He's not going to say, oh, yes, you, you really had a tough time. I gave you a lot of talents, and I understand that situations and circumstances kept you from fulfilling your purpose. No. Jesus is going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? The world cannot stop you from fulfilling your purpose. But we best fulfill our purpose in a team. And Jesus' choice is the church. So if you want to fulfill your God-given purpose, be part of a church. James 1 verse 12 says, Those who endure temptations, difficulties, they will obtain the crown of life. The Amplified says the victorious crown of life. Family, God has planned good things for you. Every trial, every difficulty is meant to strengthen you. To have that attitude, we count it all joy. We glory in tribulation. Because you know that trial is just there for you to get a promotion, for you to get a reward for you to move closer to God when you overcome the tree of life, when you overcome the manna, hidden manna, when you overcome to start to rule, when you overcome every time Jesus is drawing you, bringing you closer into the holy of holies, the throne where he is ruling from. Amen? A place that God has prepared for us. The first instruction to Adam and Eve, was to dominate, to rule this earth. God came and sent Jesus to restore everything back so that we can overcome again. You need a revelation that you've become a king and a priest. You need revelation that on the inside, it's a victorious spirit, Jesus Christ. The mere fact that you understand your purpose doesn't mean that you're never going to face challenges. You might even face more challenges. Would you like to hear more about my difficulties and challenges? Hmm. I think I'll have to start a second service, amen. I think sometimes God deals with us like, like a Joseph. He gives you the vision. In the palace, you belong in the palace where your brothers will bow before you and you'll be a ruler. And then while you're standing here looking at this prophetic picture, somehow God just leaves out the brothers that will throw you in a pit, the prison. <laughs> Every time you find yourself in a pit or being locked down, on the inside you should say, I know where I belong. I understand my purpose. These challenges... It's just to bring more revelation, more understanding. 
These things are bringing me closer to God. Stop procrastinating and take action. That which God has placed in your heart can be part of the body of Christ so that we can fulfill our purpose. God has got a purpose for you, and that purpose is to glorify His name. Selah. Precious Father, we thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for placing eternity within our hearts and taking us from where we are to where you want us to be. Help us, O oh precious Holy Spirit, that everything about us will be everything about you. We want to ask, Lord, place within our hearts a genuine desire for your word and for your holiness so that we can abide in your word and be known as your disciples, O oh Lord. Thank you, Master Jesus, as you help us to keep your word that we know that our Father in heaven will keep us from evil. We thank you for that. We bless you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to put your right hand on your heart and raise your other hand to heaven and just pray this prayer aloud after me. Say, Precious Father, my situation is beyond human means. I need the Savior of the world to save me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, that he's alive right now, making intercession for all my weaknesses. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me to live a holy life, well-pleasing in your sight, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, yes, you can give the Lord a hand. If you've prayed that prayer in humility and sincerity of heart, your sins are forgiven. Your past is over. Don't talk about your past again. Your past is Egypt. It's a place of defeat and failure. It's Israel in bondage, a type of the church that God has taken out, leading them to the promised land. Amen. I want to encourage you to find a living church. If you've prayed that prayer here and you're in the area, we have to take responsibility for you, to train you in the things of the Lord so that you can finish strong. If you're from afar, and afar is like 300 kilometers from here, amen? Because a church alive is worth the drive, amen? Go find a living church and get involved there. Serve there, go and report for duty. That God gift that God has given you, go and use it to strengthen the body of Christ. Amen. Has your faith been lifted? Amen.